Hi, this is Kong Zerus, and I have some exciting news to share about Star Wars Battle Pod and how you can play it on your Star Wars Arcade 1UP through some new updates with Techno Parrot and allowing you to use a digital input for your throttle. So no longer do you need an analog throttle like I've been obsessed with the last couple months. You can now map throttle and brake to a control setting, even some buttons on your yoke. I'm going to show you how to do this and get everything set up plus a resolution spix that will make it run full screen. Let's start completely from scratch. First thing you're going to need is the actual TechnoParrot emulator. So open up your browser, type in TechnoParrot, and instead of going to the main page here, go to this TechnoParrot home here, the TechnoGods GitHub page that has more downloads that you're going to need. Click on the Downloads tab, grab the actual TechnoParrot file here, as well as a DirectX user end times, Visual C++, and 7-zip to unlock everything. Once you have everything downloaded into your downloads folder or your desktop, we'll get everything installed. Alright, so here's my TechnoParrot file as well as the Visual C Plus and DirectX files here on my desktop. Let's go ahead and install TechnoParrot first. We're going to go ahead and get this installed um, through 7-zip and extract the files directly onto our desktop here. So let's go ahead and do that. Boom! Now we have our TechnoParrot folder on our desktop. The next thing we're going to do is get these DirectX files installed. So first off, right click, hold on to a new folder, type in DirectX for a blank folder. And when you double click on this file, it'll open up and ask you to drop it into a folder. Select the new folder that you just did onto your desktop, hit OK, and it'll unzip everything into that folder. Next, open up that folder, right click on the DX setup. I like to run this as administrator just in case you don't need to do this, but go ahead and accept the agreement, hit next, next, get this installed on your computer. While this is running, you can also get your Visual C++ programs ready too. So that's installing now. Go ahead and right click on this file, open up 7-zip, extract files. This is also going to extract onto your desktop as well. So now you have a new folder here. So DirectX is done. Let's open up our Visual C++ and you'll see the install all bat file, batch file. Right click, run as administrator. And you may see some pop-ups on your screen as well that says to, to ask you if you want to make changes to your computer. Make sure you select Run. And then on the window screen down here that you allow all the batch files to install. If you've already done this on your computer, uh, that has no harm for reinstalling everything, which I've already done. So that's installing DirectX and Visual C++ onto your computers. Once you're done with the basic installation of those files, you can go ahead and just delete all these folders. You really don't need them anymore. You can just hold on to them if you'd want to for future reference, but we don't need them on our desktop. Next, you're going to need the actual arcade ROM or dump, but I can't tell you exactly where to get this. But I will tell you to go to search and type in the word EmuLine. And the very first thing you might see is EmuLine Star Wars Battle Pod. Google that, see what comes up, and you'll find more information that you'll need to grab that ROM. Once you have your game file, go ahead and open up the TechnoParrot folder and open up the TechnoParrot UI for the first time. The very first time you run it, you'll see this pop-up saying you're running it for the first time, please set emulation settings. Hit OK and it'll ask you to add games and add all these pop-ups about updating it to the latest version. Go ahead and update everything that you see here and uh, once you finish that, it'll restart and then we can start adding games to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this up really quickly. So we're all updated with TechnoParrot 1.0.0.393, the latest version of the UI. And this updated metal bird looks pretty awesome. It's a new updated parrot. Uh, I know my boy Quackly loves that parrot there. And let's go ahead and left click on that icon up here, the left top area. Click on TechnoParrot, uh, actually add game. And we're going to add Star Wars Battle Pod. So are all the list of games that are available for TechnoParrot, we're going to focus on just this game here. Click on that, click on add, and you'll see it added to your list. But we still got to set things set up. Click on game settings, and the first thing we'll have to do is set the game executable file. So click on this empty space here, browser will pop up, and you're going to go to your desktop section where your file folder that you download the whole arcade dump is. Open up that folder, you're going to go into the launcher folder, and then click on a file called rslauncher and set it there. 
So for these other options here, if you're going to use a control panel or buttons, you're going to want to set this up to uh, your arcade buttons and not select X input. We do want free play. We'll leave the remove camera area checked off. We're going to uncheck window so it runs full screen. Uh, last thing, if you're running this on your yoke, you do want to select this reverse Y axis, which is a really nice function here. Uh, and then this use keyboard button for access. This is a new feature here that got added in where now we can map this button to a keyboard and actually use our throttle for break and thrust. Now we need to map our controller setup. So here we click on here and you can see a sample version of my control panel with all the different buttons, the Suzo hat throttle here, another Tron joystick on an analog stick. You actually don't need any of this stuff anymore. This is really exciting. I was obsessed with this, but now you can get away with just using the four buttons on the yoke and the yoke itself. So this is really exciting for folks that want to have a low cost option at this mod. Let's set up our throttle and our brake to these two buttons on the left here. So our throttle is going to be this bottom left trigger and down at the bottom here, this throttle brake, we can now set this brake to a button. So let's set this as our top button. So those would be a thrust and brake right here. Our analog left is just going to be moving our yoke to the left. Our analog Y up is going to be moving it up and down. And then our main weapons are still here. The bottom right trigger is our main weapon and the secondary weapon the top. Those are all the buttons you need to be able to run Star Wars Battle Pod now. The last thing you can do is adding a view change button. I just like to add that to this big red button here so you can have a cockpit view. That's it. So let's go ahead and launch it and see if it works. Alright, next we're going to close out some windows and just click this launch game button here and we'll see it running. You'll see this window pop up and some things showing up here, resuming game. Uh, since we are on a black screen, I like to set up my screen and close some of these windows to see if the bottom of the screen works. Um, this game likes to run by default in 16 by 9 settings. So you'll see the bottom of your screen there still showing. I'm going to go over a full, uh, full screen patch in just a second. But let's see if this works with its current setup right now. I'm going to turn on my camera. And there it is. Let's go ahead and hit our trigger button. All right, so we're ready in the game already. So I'm going to continue pressing the button uh, here and we're gonna find a moment of truth right now where we're gonna press this bottom left button to throttle and have it stay in the throttle mode and allow this button to break and not be stuck as it was before. So I was always obsessed with having an analog throttle, a separate version, so you can enjoy this game. I still think this is the best way to play it, but this is a really cool option. So push the button. We got our throttle thrust moving and then see how it's moving on the screen. But now this button is our brake. So thrust, brake, thrust, brake. This is great. This is super fantastic. Uh, we reversed our axis already, so we're in perfectly uh, you know, pitched mode to be able to move our yoke around. So we got up, down, left, right. We are playing battle pod with only the yoke only in the way that it was meant to be played. So you can have both hands on the throttle or in the yoke. You can brake, you can thrust. This is actually a super fun way to play this game as well. So now you can really enjoy this uh, with both hands on the yoke itself. I'm super thrilled that you can do this for many people that were thinking about uh, doing this mod and, and worried about installing an extra uh, throttle control panel. I still think it looks cool as hell to have this T-throttle and, and I still enjoy playing it this way, but I just discovered Technoparry did this so I wanted to make sure that people knew about this option. The best way to play this game is still with the throttle, but this is a great option for those that just want to set it to a button on your mod. Stay tuned for fixes on how to run this full screen.